I want to talk to you guys a little bit about my, my kind of journey and how this has looked in my life to maybe give you a, a paradigm or a grid so that you can understand what that means for you. Now, as I said, um, I think I mentioned this once before that you know, I was raised in the church. My dad you know, is a minister, pastor, bishop, whatever you want to call him. And, and uh, over the last about 30 years, we've had maybe 50 or 60 churches that were church plants out of his, you know, the main church, this church called All Nations Church. And uh, it's Pentecostal church. And so from the time I was like a little kid, I was exposed to, you know, all the things associated with the spirit-filled churches. You know, some people rolling on the floor, some people jumping, hollering, screaming. And, uh, but all of that, you know, hearing these great, powerful, loud preachers <laughs> never seemed to do much for me because I'd sit there in the back and I just was like, yeah, Jesus, you're awesome. Woo! You know. But that was it. You know, the extent of my passion for God was always external. If I thought the service was cool or the music was good, then I'd raise my hands and worship. But then when I go home, you know, I wasn't living that way. It was not a lifestyle for me. And so because of that lack of reality in my relationship with God, I began to backslide as a high school student, begin to smoke, begin to drink, begin to do a lot of other things, which I'm ashamed of. And as I talked about a little yesterday, I was delivered from those things. But what happened next was... I said, okay, Lord, I'm set free. I'm on fire. I want to tell everybody I see about you, but, like, how do you do that? Like, am I supposed to, like, walk up to every single stranger I see at the mall and be like, hey, uh, you know, are you going to go to heaven or hell when you die? I mean, I don't know. So I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, help me understand what this means to be on fire for you in a day-to-day -day sense. And the, thing, the first thing he told me was that to be on fire for him is not based on what you do. Amen. It's not based on how many mission trips you go on, how many retreats you attend. Being on fire for God is not about how many souls you win. You know what being on fire for God is? It's when your heart burns with love for him in response to him. When you're on fire for God, it's not evident because you screaming or really loud when you sing. The fire of God is evident when you are in love with Jesus. When no one else is around in the middle of the night, you pick up your guitar, you get on your keyboard, and you're singing to the Lord. Being on fire for God is about a personal devotion to him. And the implication of that is that it will lead you to be a witness outwardly. And so what happened with me was once I was, you know, baptized and, and born again, filled with the Spirit, as I was praying this prayer, the first thing God showed me was like, it does not start evangelism. I want to talk about this first, the topic of evangelism. Evangelism does not start with a zeal for human beings. It doesn't even start with a broken heart for people who are going to hell. Those are things that we should have, but the number one motivation for any evangelist or for someone to share the gospel is not a zeal for people. It's a zeal for God. It's a zeal for the glory of the Lord. And so, so many people in our generation have been indoctrinated with these humanistic ideas about suffering. And so they're more broken that human beings, who by nature are wicked and depraved, are going to eternal damnation in hell and brimstone fire. So they're sad about that. They're like, oh, no, the poor earthlings are going to hell. I mean, it's true that there's some reality to that, but that's humanism at its core. Because the thing that really should motivate any child of God is the, the zeal for the Lord. When you look to the cross and when you see what Jesus Christ, the, the ultimate sacrifice, the perfect lamb of God, what he did, he emptied himself of his divinity. He came, he did not consider equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he humbled himself. He took the form of a servant, became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. And when he did that for this whole world, that they might be saved through faith in his name, the glory and the, and the worth of that man that hung on the cross for our sins is what should motivate us. Because the reality is when you go and you share the gospel, many times people don't want to hear what you have to say. And if you build your confidence on whether they received you or rejected you or not, you're going to be really disappointed really quick when they start spitting at you and when they start telling you you're a Jesus freak and you're a wacko. And if you don't have your motivation anchored in him, you're going to fall because all your fire is coming from the outside. Maybe some guy got up and preached this, this really passionate, humanistic message about human beings, and you got stirred in your soul, but you never had understanding of what this was really all about. So the first thing that God taught me was that this motivation has to come for, from a love relationship with him, for his glory and for his namesake in the nations of the earth. And secondarily, then he begins to break your heart for people. 